Hi, I'm Dr. Barbara Yon, and I'm the co-principal investigator of the Rochester Epidemiology Project. And I'm going to take just a second to tell you about that, and then we're going to talk about this study, which is the age and sex pattern of drug prescribing in Olmsted County. But the REP, or Rochester Epidemiology Project, is a project that's been around for over 40 years. We gather all of the information for the diagnosis and frequency of visits and of course all the demographics of people who have been seen in any of the healthcare facilities in Olmsted County. Recently we've added the prescription drugs and that's what this paper is all about taking advantage of that new knowledge uh, because it's exciting to see on a population basis what medications are being used. The first thing we found out is, as you would expect, medications are quite common. 70% of the population, and this is from birth to death, had a prescription of one particular class of medication at least in a year. So 70% of all individuals. 50% of people had prescriptions in two or more classes and it went down then to 30% in three and on down as you can imagine. Now the age and the sex distribution of course are also very interesting. Some of them are exactly as you would expect. The antibiotics and the vaccines and toxoids are most common in young children up to the age of about 15. And that's what most of us expect because they have mainly acute illnesses, acute infections, and they have lots of vaccinations that they need to receive. Between the ages of about 18 and 40, the prescriptions were primarily uh, for medications in the antidepressant area and the antilipemics and then followed later and of course only in women for the uh, anti-pregnancy drugs as you can expect, the contraceptives. But those were less common than you might have expected. As we get on to the older adults, then we of course go on with the antilipemics, the cardiovascular, the hypertensive, which is part of cardiovascular. Again, shows up the vaccines and the toxoids a little bit, but they aren't one of the top two or three. But this kind of a pattern is really important for us to know about because we all know that the problems of multiple drugs, especially in the older population, but what we wanted to understand are some of these other things that haven't come out quite as broadly in the literature. For example, the issue of antidepressants. The fact that they were so common in this younger age group from the 20s to the 45s and then the 45 to the 65 was surprising. We have now gone ahead and done further work to look at the patterns over several years. This was only one year, this was 2005, and we're following up to see how did we get to here with the antidepressants? What are they being used for? Is it the same in men and women? As of course you expect it not to be, and it wasn't. There were more women than men, but also how did it get to be in the elderly population where there have been conflicting information about pros and cons. So we found what you expect to find, which is the antibiotics, which we still may be overprescribing in the younger children, uh, the vaccines, which is great, we want them to get their vaccines, then these antidepressants, which we need to know a lot more about, and then, of course, the cardiovascular drugs that we anticipate as people get older. We also now have a basis for starting to look at potential drug interactions. And as you all know, anytime you prescribe a drug, it seems that four things come up on the EMR saying, oops, there might be an interaction with this and this and this and this. 
But because we have this data, we can not only look at what those interactions might be, but we can go ahead and look at the outcomes in the real medical records. And that's one of the advantages of the Rochester Epidemiology Project. Thank you for listening, and I hope this helps you think a little bit when you prescribe your next medications. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.